So there are these box sets that are a mix of terrible movies and classic movies and I'm slowly working my way through them. So today I'm watching the 1920 film The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm anticipating it will be in black and white given the time of its release and possibly a silent film as well. The earliest film that I have reacted to has been Nosferatu but even this predates Nosferatu by a couple years so I'm very curious to see what this is going to be about. I've heard it's one of the most iconic early horror movies and I believe it's a German film as well so I'm very excited to watch this classic finally. Thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below and if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch be sure to join Patreon and as always please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Yeah, I didn't recognize the director's name or anything. So yeah, comment below. Are they famous? Did they go on to do other things? I love this like green handwritten intro. Very cool. Okay, it's gonna be more like a ghost story. So like the spirits are alive. Like we've lived through them. We've lived through some strange things. Let me tell you about it. Oh, like an animated section as well? Okay, interesting. All right, not animated, like hand-drawn. I'm assuming that they uh, won't be moving, but... The music is insane. It's so well done. It's so creepy. We've got like this piano music and this like beep almost sounds like a heart monitor or something in the background. So creepy. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what this fair is all about. Oh, okay. It's like they did. That's cool. They had like the painted background and now they're bringing it to life. And I've noticed like the frames have been different colors. Like the previous one was green. This one's more like orangey yellow. So... With the older movies, I'm assuming something happened with the color processing process or the film processing process or over time they've just been tinted or color damaged, so. That like mark on the floor, it looks almost like the symbol that we've seen behind the text when it comes up as well, like these geometric shapes. I'm obsessed with these sets. They're so cool, like his chair, and again, a similar symbol on the background. Come, Francis, let's go to the fair. Entertainment of every variety. Hmm. Oh, here we go, okay. Gave him his business card. Okay, so this gentleman is our doctor. Doctor, doctor. What kind of doctor is he? Medical doctor? His hair matches his glove, like what? Those like three claw marks almost. The town clerk, yeah, and he's got like numbers written on the side of his uh, little podium here. That's how I edit, hunched over like that. That's why my back hurts constantly. Wait, I said wait, three exclamation points. How are you not understanding? A salmon uh, what I uh, I have no idea what that is yeah comment below if you know what that is is it just like an outdated term for something or maybe it's just a very specific German term that it doesn't translate I have no idea what that means They're doing a great job of showing like depth within the shot without actually having to make like seven different scenes. Like you could show people in the background, you know, people are moving even though the wall is a painted set like it would be in a play. A murder? What? The town clerk, oh man. They don't say stabbed with a knife, they just say a strange pointed instrument, okay. I 
I'm trying to think of what that role would be based off of the name and I got nothing, I'm sorry. He's been asleep his whole life. Is he in a coma? Sounds like you're falling down a well, like Alice in Wonderland or something. He's like, trust me, I'm a doctor. I wouldn't lead you astray. Come into my mysterious tent. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Is he a vampire? Yeah, I'm curious how he's been asleep for 23 years. Or is it a form of like narcolepsy or something or insomnia where they just sleep constantly? Yeah, I'm very curious. That's so creepy, especially because he's got just such dark, like, under his eyes is so dark, and he's just slowly opening his eyes into the camera. Oh, spooky. And how can the a doctor, he's the only one who can bring him to life? So yeah, I'm very curious. He's acting almost like Frankenstein or something, like he's like a creature that's been awakened now. It's awake, it's awake. He knows the past and sees the future. Okay. Very curious indeed. Oh my, I'm going right for the big questions. All right. So he's almost like a fortune teller. It's just so haunting looking like it's just and it's nothing crazy oh till the break of dawn i had to i'm sorry well that's not very long from now bud better make some plans ha 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 you're gonna die soon ha ha nervous laugh And they painted the newspaper into the wall? That's crazy. And I love how they mixed like real set deck. Like he was lighting the lanterns, but then they also have windows it looks like painted onto the walls, which is crazy. And everything's like off kilter. Like nothing is straight and like clean lines. Everything is slightly askew. And yeah, like this crooked house and his crooked window. I love it. Obviously just adding to this element of that something spooky is going on, something weird and unexplainable. Uh-oh. Love triangle. I'll, oh, just shown in shadows. So cool. Oh my gosh, he's getting out! He said he wouldn't live till dawn, so... Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing that they killed the other guy with. Yeah, and how we only saw it in the shadows reminded me of Nosferatu as well. And I think that was a clever way for movies before special effects and before, you know, they knew how to do these things to show things without really having to show them. And it also adds mystery because who's the killer we didn't really get to see them we just saw their hands quickly and then it cut away oh alan the guy was right well it looks like she'll her choice is now made for her i guess yeah that's what he predicted at the fair That's so creepy having her in the background. She just completely blends in, especially with like the colors and stuff too. And oh, for zoom in on this guy. Oh, it's curtains. I'm obsessed with these sets. Oh man. Ha <laughs> ha And the piano keys as he's climbing the stairs. Ha <laughs> ha. So cool. <laughs> 
And it's so interesting watching older movies as most of the movement takes place within the frame, whereas I think in newer movies we're used to seeing the camera moving. This is the opposite. The camera is stationary and all the motion is, the, you know, the characters leaving the frame, what they're doing within that scene. <laughs> They're like, well, he predicted he would die, and that came true, so he just became suspect number one. Hmm. And it's interesting to see their mouths move, but not hear the words. Obviously, it's a silent film, but I think in Nosferatu, we didn't even see their mouths move. I think it was just the text that came up. I wonder if they're actually saying their lines. I can't read German, let alone German Ripley lip read, so I couldn't tell you. Another one? Oh my gosh! Yeah, he's obviously keeping him alive somehow. He feeds him and keeps him locked up in this cabinet or cupboard or whatever it is. Like, that's why I thought maybe he was a vampire, because he seemed like it seems like a coffin that he's in, but we haven't seen him bite anybody, so who knows. I'm obsessed with this staircase. So cool. And like, it's black and white, but they've made it just so visually dynamic and interesting. Like, they have that pattern on the stairs and how one of the walls is black and white. And it's not just like, everything's all black or everything's all white. They did such a good job of mixing them. Oh, they caught the guy? Okay. He's like, see, I told you it wasn't my guy. That's an evil smile. Oh, shoot, did they catch the wrong guy? What are we doing? Come, if those three mark, I thought he was wearing gloves, but it's definitely, it looks like his hands. It's hard to tell in black and white if they're his gloves or his hands, but what does the three marks mean on his hand? I feel bad for silent film actresses because I feel like there's so few of them that are known today because a lot of the films were lost. Yeah, they're arresting him, but he's like, I had nothing to do with it. He obviously looked very suspicious running around with that pointy object. He's like, oh, but I did try to kill this old woman, but just not the other guys, so. He's just a copycat. He's got that great, like, mad scientist, evil doctor look, like, yes. <laughs> Don't do it, it's a trap. I feel like she'll never be seen again. Yeah, comment below if you know how they made these sets. I'm very, uh, I'd love to learn more about it. Yeah, when does the doctor sleep? Oh my, creeping through the window. I love how they drew the fence besides the doctor's house. It just looks like, it's just such a cool display of illusion because it makes it look like it goes all the way back. He's doing his own theme music. -na 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 -na. <laughs> He's like, I'll just remove this. Uh, excuse me, just uh, need to climb in here. And of course, having the, you know, the criminal, this killer all in black and she's just laid out beautifully on this white bed and she's wearing white. Sees so having second thoughts. Oh God. I thought he was asleep. What are we doing? He's like, I'm taking the whole bed with me. Oh my God. See you later. Bye. He's like, I'm keeping this one. I don't want to kill it. Well, at least we know who the killer is now. It's so cool. It's like a movie within a painting, basically, because you don't know what's 
real for them to interact with and what's just like decorative basically. It's like, you know what, just kidding, I'll leave you here. Bye, everybody's on to me. Yes, okay, it was Caesar. But I thought that guy looking through the window was there all night, so how did he... Yeah, exactly. It couldn't have been him. Which is creepy, very creepy, but, you know, it worked. They're taking him with them, they're like, okay. We've had a kidnapping and she's confirmed it's this guy, but, uh... He's apparently asleep constantly, so how is that possible? Oh, it's a mannequin. Oh, you've been fooled. How dare you? Oh, what a ruse. I knew this doctor was up to no good. like is he somehow like leaving his body like what are we doing but yeah it was fake and if he's supposed to be asleep then it he can look you know he doesn't have to move or anything so it's just spying on him from the window oh my gosh i just love all the detail that went into this like all the thought of making every possible angle oh the insane asylum what He's not a doctor at all, is he? Yeah, interesting how now we have the rounded edges at the asylum. Is he actually a doctor? Or is he a patient? Uh, I don't know. Oh my gosh, okay, here we go. I love this door. Ah, I'm obsessed with this movie. <laughs> He's the director of the insane asylum. What? <laughs> that honestly almost looked like they were turning on the lights. <laughs> okay, he's a mystic. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's a book about them? What? Somebody's studied them already? Yeah, he's under the control of the doctor. His nefarious schemes. Da -da -da -da. Oh, okay. Caesar's from the asylum, okay. doctor think like he's like bringing something back to life because this guy's asleep all the time and he's like finally I can have something to control oh god yeah I'm curious how he learned to control him like what did he do yeah he's not aware what he's doing he's completely asleep so yeah, he's like, I can make him do whatever we want. He has no recollection of it. He just does what he's told. Oh, it's sleepwalking. Oh, okay. Even murder? That's the medical name for sleepwalker, I guess? I'd say at the very least, yes. So is his name actually... Caligari or does he want to become him because he read about him in a book and wants to become this mystic? Oh, that's so cool to have the text come up on screen as he's like, I must become this person. That's so cool. I love that. I haven't seen anything, especially this early, that's happened that's done it like this. It's kind of reminded me of like a David Lynch film, which I know came out much, much later, but uh, so cool. 
just to like really understand his like frame of mind and like what he's thinking about. Yeah, that's horrible. This doctor's just been using him against his will, obviously, and he's like, he's asleep, he has no idea what he's doing, and he just does whatever I tell him, and this doctor's just abusing his power greatly, and, uh, the doctor wants to commit these murders, but, uh, sends out this guy instead, so the doctor is, like, not guilty, even though he's the one orchestrating it. The puppet master. Well, he's a patient now, I guess. They're like, they realize that he's, uh, in a different level, so they put him in a straitjacket. Oh my gosh. He's gone from director to uh, patient now at his own insane asylum. Yeah, and it's interesting to have the story told in flashbacks. He's, you know, telling this guy what happened to him. Now she's at the asylum. Yeah, Caesar seems to be wide awake. I'm guessing Jane's been in the asylum this whole time. That's the director, isn't it? all think I'm insane. Okay, who's- what's happening? Who's insane here? Oh, he says the director is insane. What? 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 <laughs> he definitely looks like- he doesn't look like the evil doctor now. He looks like a normal person. <laughs> We're just giving away straight jackets. I mean, it is an insane asylum, so, you know. <laughs> That's the exact same room that they just locked the doctor into. What? Yes, he thinks the director is this mystic. Okay. So he's a patient there now? What? And the director is obviously fine. What? So that was my first time watching the 1920 film, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. I am obsessed with it. I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I liked it better than Nosferatu, which I feel like is the only accurate comparison I have based on when it came out and same kind of horror genre. So cool, so well done. Uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, Francis, our narrator that we see at the beginning, is in fact part of the insane asylum and I feel like has been there the entire time and when they set it up it felt like okay Francis is just retelling the story to this person he met and then we get the story from Francis's point of view which I feel like explains a lot of things now that we see how it ends obviously but it's so interesting to have this unreliable narrator as if Francis is in fact insane and part of this asylum, then everything we've learned from the movie is basically made up. And I feel like that plays a lot into the way the sets were designed because everything was very sharp and pointed edges and like that sharp object that was going around killing people and so creative and so cool. Definitely a lots of twists and turns and obviously finding out that Francis is in fact part of this asylum and if the doctor isn't evil at all and it just shows the power of storytelling because the audience just believes what we're told basically we thought Francis was reliable we thought the doctor was the bad guy and he's setting up Caesar to be this sleepwalking killer I'm glad they finally said a different word for what that other word was I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it because I'm sure I will horribly butcher it and I was wondering how the doctor was able to control the sleepwalker like what methods was he using and the fact that he had been asleep for 23 years his entire life life basically also seemed a little odd but you're like okay maybe this is something else like maybe he has a really extreme case of it or narcolepsy or something like that and I thought it was interesting to kind of have the story 
focus on the abuse of power and when we also learn that Francis in fact is under you know the authority of somebody else he can't make his own choices he's at this insane asylum and doctors end up putting him in the exact same room that in his mind is where the doctor was so that was an interesting comparison how Francis's story also involves this guy who's under the control of something that he can't really have a say in that he's been asleep as we see the doctor sending Caesar out on these murders and they're like, well, if he was awake, he would never do these things. He has no idea what's happening. He's just a puppet, basically, which I feel like is how Francis feels being stuck in this asylum. You know, he can't do what he wants. He can't make his own choices. He's stuck under the authority of other people. He's stuck under the authority of doctors. So then in his story and his version of the events, the doctor is the one who's trapping him and being the evil bad guy, basically. I don't know if this is based on a book or anything like that. It didn't list one in the credits, but yeah, comment below if there are source materials material for this. I don't know if there are sequels or remakes or anything. I haven't heard of any, but I know this obviously came out a long time ago as well, over a hundred years ago. Other than A Nightmare on Elm Street, this is another horror movie that I've seen that includes like sleeping, being involved with uh, violent acts and even the fact that he had this booth up at the fair to show people that this guy was a sleepwalker and I was like why would you want to go see that what would be you know the intrigue to see somebody who's asleep and obviously it was a ruse for these murders so now I'm curious if Francis was the one committing the murders or if he just made up this entire story and nobody was actually killed and it makes me wonder if the study of sleep was something doctors were pursuing at that time uh, comment below and let me know and I feel like having that insane a asylum you know adage obviously makes a whole new element of fear and I don't really see that in modern movies as much I didn't recognize the director's name or any of the actors so comment below did they go on to do famous things was this really popular when it came out I don't know off the top of my head any other movies that would have been released around the same time other than Nosferatu which I know was a couple years later but I'm curious how this did at the box office what that looked like if people were like what did I just watch? What's happening? This is so bizarre. And there was definitely a lot of twists. It was an interesting story and it definitely like kept you guessing. And I'm curious how that was received. If people who were going to the movies just wanted, you know, strictly entertainment, if they wanted more romance style films. So comment below if you know how this did when it was first released. I know this has gotten a status over time, obviously, for being such a well done movie and it truly sticks up to its name. It's a masterpiece from start to finish. I I wonder if when they made this film they would have known that a hundred years later people would still be watching it, still be discussing it. There's so many pieces to this movie. I feel like there's lots of layers and lots of things to discuss, which is movies that I love. Once you can talk about it, I'll definitely be thinking about this for the next few days and one that I'll have to rewatch at some point, just be like, oh, okay, this is where this makes sense. And now that I know how it ends, obviously, it's interesting to watch it back and have that different perspective because you'll be viewing it from a different angle. As it was a silent film, a music played a big, big part of this movie and I thought they did an outstanding job. Uh, from what I understand, they used to have the orchestra actually in the theater. So when you went to watch the movie, it wasn't like a soundtrack playing in the background or anything like that. It was a live orchestra orchestra that played along to the movie as you watch the movie which is so cool that would be such an amazing experience and I thought they just knocked it out of the park completely and really defines the movie as they set up all the suspense and the tension and at some points the music seemed a little off but I feel like that was obviously done on purpose to set it up for what was happening in Francis's mind and we're in his you know disillusioned world and everything from the set is already off so it really worked and really helped tell that story. I think it would have been weird to watch having this like really flowy soft dreamy music in the background throughout the entire thing. We needed something a little bit jarring and a little bit like off tilts like the rest of the movie was. There's one scene I remember in particular when they arrest that guy, the first guy that they think is the one doing the murders and he like puts his hand down like this and the music just like goes along with the motions of him being like, oh no, we got him. And even one of the scenes with the staircase when he's going up the stairs, the piano like boop, 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 boop and like follows his footsteps up the stairs. Just so creative, so well done and really told the story through music, which I feel like is a huge responsibility. Like the actors have to play their parts for sure, but the music has to create that atmosphere and has to transport the viewer into this world because without that music, it's a completely different experience. I couldn't imagine 
sitting in complete silence watching this. I know it's a silent film, but not having the music to accompany it, I feel like you would just be missing so much and you wouldn't get that full experience. I am completely obsessed with the sets and the design and everything it was so cool, so well done. I can't wait to learn more about it now that I finished watching it. I love learning all that behind the scenes facts. So comment below if you know how they did it, what kind of methods they went into it. I know it was obviously very early on being 1920. So everything was hand drawn and everything was hand created and the audience gets this very sharp and tilted and pointed world and something is very askew I thought was so fitting and especially when we find out uh, who our narrator is and that staircase I could stare at that shot all day it may seem like a very simple set but I thought they just did such a cool job with it and when we have one of the characters is standing at the bottom of the stairs and for a second it looked like his feet were lining up with two of the black marks going up the stairs so I thought oh okay that's his shadow but then the actor moved and the line stayed the same so I was like okay that's interesting but again I don't know if that was done out of budget if they're trying to you know tell you something about the character if it was just a design choice I have no idea again I love that there's so many different options you can explore as much as I love the sets it was very uncomfortable to be in and very anxious because everything is like pointed and then curved in at the top so very like you're closed in and just made you feel very anxious and I wonder what the feeling on set would have been like to walk around in those spaces and to just be there and how the windows are all painted onto the buildings and everything's crooked and everything's you know at a tilted angle. I love how they incorporated real light fixtures as well. There was one scene where we saw somebody come by and light uh, a lantern that was hanging outside of the buildings. I was like okay that's cool you're kind of like mixing mediums to have a practical light as well as these like drawn on sets and drawn on windows windows and everything was very flat like the front of the house it was very 2d obviously as it's drawn onto a wall and he just opens the door and even the doors like every possible situation for things to be out of place the only curves we really saw are when we got to the asylum and then we had those three curved archways to the doors leading up to what I'm assuming is the offices or another part of the asylum those are the only curves that I noticed other than like the bridge had some curves in it and I guess like when you walk around the corner that's a curve if you really want to be that technical about it but comparing like specifically the doorways and all the architecture the asylum seemed to be the only place that had those curves which I think is an interesting comparison considering the asylum is in fact reality for Francis but Francis doesn't see it that way we're seeing Francis's world when everything is sharp and having those skewed edges that's Francis's world that's the world he lives in and then when we cut back to the asylum and have those rounded softer edges that's in fact the real world and the fact that Jane is in the asylum as well and he's like oh I'm in love with Jane and you know I want to marry her and she's my fiance and then when he talks to Jane at the end of the film she mentioned something about being a queen so maybe that's her reality in her world at the asylum she's a queen and the fact that Caesar is doesn't seem to have any sleepwalking abilities uh, maybe it comes out later but the shot we saw of him he was very much awake and seemed to be very like docile and you know just kind of hanging out in his own little world off in the corner didn't seem to be violent or aggressive towards anybody. It's interesting how they use this concept of this like traveling fair as a facade for evil which we also saw in the book at the end and a fair is usually something joyous and then he's using it as a front for these murders and it reminded me of another killer called H.H. Holmes who was the assumed killer. I don't know if it was ever actually confirmed but definitely a suspected killer for the Chicago World Fair where he had this house that had all these crazy passages and doors that could only be locked from the outside and just this house of torture chambers basically but that was the first thing that came to mind and I believe they're making a movie about uh, that person as well I'm curious to find out what the meaning behind those geometric shapes on the text were when we had the title cards come up and we saw them as pieces in some of the sets as well so again maybe that's just how Francis views things and maybe that's part of Francis's world is how he sees things and I don't know if there is any meaning to any of those shapes. All the shapes seem to be very obscure like instead of a star with like five sides or six sides that were all evenly shaped it would be a star with like three even sides and then two really small sides or something like everything seemed slightly off and imperfect. 
so yeah i'm very curious maybe there is no meaning behind it maybe it's just there for decorative purposes and even how the doctor had those three stripes on his glove and then it looked like he had like three rows of his hair as well whether that again means anything if you want to read into that or if it's just purely for decorative purposes i don't know it was just interesting to see how francis views the world and what pieces he brought with him from his mind and what elements he would include. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I would definitely watch this again. Honestly, I'm obsessed with this movie. I will try not to make this a four hour long review because I feel like I could just keep going on and on about all the things that I loved about it. Such an interesting story and I love they had that twist at the end and we find out that in fact Francis is the one in the insane asylum and he's been making up this whole story and we've kind of been living in his crooked world for the entire movie. I'm obsessed with the sets. I'm obsessed obsessed with the music. I definitely am going to do a lot of research and I'm definitely very excited to learn more about it. So yeah, comment below if you know any behind the scenes trivia or anything like that. I love learning all that stuff. Just this abstract world inside the brain of this madman and the concept of like sleep and what do we do when we're asleep and can we be held accountable for those things and the role of authority and madness and just all combined into this one story. I wish those sets were still up to date because I I feel like it'd be so cool to go walk around in that world and it almost feels like the floor would be tilted as well. I know we didn't see the actors, you know, walk on a slant or anything, but it just feels like such an abstract, obscure place that you'd kind of be expecting that. Obviously the acting was over the top, but it needed to be because it's silent and you're basing your entire, you know, reading of the film based off the actor's expressions. I like the way they had it broken down and the different acts and it definitely read like a play, which I feel like is common for that time as they were transitioning from theater to cinema. I loved all the crooked sets and the backgrounds and just the artwork was insane and to the best of my knowledge something that wasn't really common at the time. Comment below and let me know but this is definitely the first film I've ever seen that's like this. Just like a masterful display of illusion and perspective and just really keeping the viewer guessing all the way through. Just a really masterful display of illusion and perspective and just just how someone views the world and I feel like we really got a look inside Francis's brain and got to see things from his perspective and the way he interprets the world which is just such a unique experience but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me I'm so so glad I finally watched this I will definitely watch this again I'm very excited to learn more about this if you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content I love this like green handwritten intro entertainment of every variety. Oh, his hair matches his glove. A murder. The town clerk. He's been asleep his whole life. He's like, trust me, I'm a doctor. I wouldn't lead you astray. Come into my mysterious tent. And they painted the newspaper into the wall. Crooked house and his crooked window. They're just giving away straight jackets. I mean, it is an insane asylum.